Well, here. Yeah. Something wrong with your ear? Take your finger. Pop! Out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every knee shall bow. Yeah. The power of God is upon us here in this place this day. Yeah. Let us receive yeah. what God has for each and every one of us and more, all of our relatives and friends that we are praying for. Let them be healed this day. Yeah. For the glory of Almighty yeah. God. We give you glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. We praise you and worship your name yeah. for the hearings of God. Yeah. That you would touch and anoint yeah. them for the same today, this day, this yeah. day, this day. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Yeah. Thank give you honor. Hallelujah. It's such an honor to be with your people today for yeah. me. You've given me such a blessing to be with these wonderful, kind, wonderful, beautiful people that I love so much in this church. I always feel like it's such an honor to come here. But especially today when you have told me what you told me before I got up here. Of what you can do for them. Let them truly, very, as a child, just receive it. As a child, let us all receive it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. As God says, so yes. little children to come unto me. Yes. For of such is the kingdom of God. And for all the soul winners in this place, O oh Lord, I pray that you would give them blessing after blessing after blessing will follow them all the days of their lives. Yes. Well, you said in Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Yes. And he or she that winneth souls yes. is wise. Yes. Maybe we need, you need wisdom in an area, go soul winning. You need wisdom in an area, go and win a soul. And God will put wisdom in you. Hey, did you get that? Just tell somebody about Jesus. Doesn't matter who or where. Never be afraid. Always be there for when God wants to use you. Because he does. You. And I'm talking about you, every one of you, God wants to use for his glory. I just want to sing a song, but you know, before I do, I just want to say, please go win the souls on a Saturday. Pick a Saturday now in your heart. Pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it. Did you pick it? Did you pick it? Raise your hands if you picked it. A Saturday. You you raised your hand. Anybody else? A Saturday you're gonna go soul winning. Come on, that's it, that's it. Raise your hands. Come on. People, you don't know what happens to you when you win souls. Me myself, I used to go in towns and go to the, the gathering of the town or in front of a big church, and hundreds of people would get one to the Lord. Just go and watch how God will use you. Amen. Yes, praise the Lord. I want to thank you for having us today. My husband almost died a couple of weeks ago. He was in intensive care. They found out that he had a, a cyst on his liver full of pus. He was all poisoned inside. And he shook all over. He couldn't move at home. And I had been asking him for a couple of weeks to go to the hospital. But he finally, he said, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. You know how men of God are. And so I said, okay. I said, God, you do it to him. You tell him. I can't get through to this guy. So I said, he said, just stay downstairs. I said, okay, I'll stay downstairs because, you know, usually I go up and down. How are you? How are you? How are you? Mm -mm, no more how are you. I just stayed down. Pretty soon I heard some big thump on the floor. My husband got up from the bed. He could hardly walk. He said, Linda, I've got to go to the hospital right now. I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I got him there, 
They brought him down for a scan. Nobody wanted to do a scan. They just wanted to give him some medicine. But then this God chose a Japanese man. Can you imagine a doctor who's Japanese came all the way from Japan so that he could be chosen so my husband's life would be saved. Amen. See, we knew our time's not finished, so he just got he just got to that hospital. He said, God, you know I've got a lot of work to do. This can't be happening. But he felt like he was dying. And I, of course, ran to the hospital with him and I was like crying out to God for God to save him and heal him. He's such a man. He doesn't say a word. He just says, oh, it's all, I'll be okay, don't worry, I'll be okay. And so they came in and they took him down because if they didn't take him down for the scan, they wouldn't know what's wrong, the guy said. So when they took him down for the scan, they saw all this poison. And that he was lucky he's not dead already. Hallelujah. No COVID. We've had both of our shots. We've never had COVID and God blessed us with that. But when he got to that hospital, that was beyond COVID. Eh? So I said, God, you've got to touch him and heal him. And, and then they, they called me from the operating room and they said, oh, we need your permission because we found all this poison in his liver coming out of the cyst. But we accidentally hit his lungs and it's all going into his lungs. Could we have your permission to put a suction in both? A big hose coming out of him from both places with suction to take it out and go into a tube and then into something else to get rid of it all. For almost two weeks they did that. Every day, suction, suction, suction. And I'm saying, God, you're sucking it all up for him. You're making sure every little bit of it is gone. You're going to touch him as never before as a minister of the gospel. His anointing will be stronger. He'll be more blessed than ever before. And I want to honor my husband today and say that he's such a man of God, he never complained to anyone there. They would have to say, ask him, do you need this, do you need that? But they never gave him water for two days because they were afraid that the infection would get worse. So after they sucked it all out, he came home and he had big balls of antibiotics like this for four weeks. So bad was that infection. Amen. And God is making him go for, he just went for his last scan. We're trusting God that all the infection will be gone on that last scan. And we covet your love and your prayers toward us during this time. But we know that we know we serve a God. I said, we serve a God who heals. And the devil cannot take away my husband because only God is going to take my husband when it's his time to go home. Because I love my baby so much. And he knows it. He knows I would do anything for Let the people know at home how much you love them. Yes. Not, not after something happens, but That's before, right. during, That's and after. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I want to sing this song because my husband asked me to sing it. I want to honor him today because he's coming back. Praise the Lord. Just stand up and just express how much you love the Lord this morning. You didn't have to do it. You didn't have to die on Calvary. But He did it for you and He did it for me. We love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Because, Lord, you first loved us. We glorify you, Lord. You are an awesome God. And what
what's impossible with man is possible with you. You're the God of the impossible. And Lord, even as people are facing impossible situations here, I know that you are able. You are able to make a way when there seems to be no way. Our God is a way maker. He's a healer. He's King of Kings and He's Lord of Lords. He's the all-sufficient one. He's the great I am. He's the Son of the living God. And He deals in impossible situations. He make the, makes the impossible possible. So we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I get excited about Jesus. He saved me from suicide. Praise God. Hallelujah. My Linda's already given my testimony. But on the 20th of February, it was my birthday when I got that infection. And I was laying in hospital when they told me what they did. They punctured my lung, everything. The devil tried to take me out. But my spiritual father, who started Christ for All Nations with Reinhard Bonnke, Michael Collison, it used to pray for the sick. He's raised about eight people from the dead. He called me on a, one morning, and I had all these spikes coming out of me. And he said, Pastor Newbury, the Lord said he's not finished with you yet. Amen. It was three o'clock in the morning our time, which is eight o'clock in Lesotho, where he's from. That's where I know Bonke started his ministry in Lesotho. And so he called me at 3 o'clock in the morning. And at 4 o'clock, the doctor came to check the machine that was extracting this, uh, you know, blood and stuff from my lungs. And he said to me, you know what? There's nothing coming out of you anymore. We can now remove this machine. Five doctors said that I need to have my blood, my gallbladder removed because that was the cause of the problem. So anyway, Linda made arrangements for the best gallbladder specialist to check me out. But the Friday morning before I was leaving for this man to have this MRI checked out, Michael Collison called me again. So I said to him, I'm on my way to have my gallbladder removed. He said, Pastor Newbury, what happened to your faith? Let me tell you something. You are not going to have that gallbladder removed because God healed you. Amen. And if God healed you, you don't need that gallbladder removed. So when we got to the doctor, the doctor kept on checking, checking, checking. Eventually he called Lynn myself into his office. He said, I'm not prepared to remove a good gallbladder. <laughs> he said, there's nothing wrong with your gallbladder. I said, well, five doctors said there was something wrong with it. He said, I'm the specialist. I have 98% positive rate. There's nothing wrong with your gallbladder. I'm not taking out a good gallbladder. So on that note, I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Verse 7, the end of verse 7 says that God loves a cheerful giver. But the next verse says, verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that you may have all sufficiency in all things. Praise God. Amen. And it is written, He has dispersed abroad, He hath given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth forever. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. 
Your word will never fail. Your word is here and amen. It's the word that came to dwell among us. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came. We know had it not been for you, we would not have been saved, delivered or set free. You didn't have to do it. But you did it for me and you did it for everyone on this earth. You laid down your life so that we could have life and life in abundance. We love you, Lord Jesus. We express our love to you this morning. We know that you are able. But you are able to make. No other God can make. But you can make. You can make a way where there seems to be no way. You are a way maker. You are a healer. You are an awesome God. And what's impossible with man is possible with you. You perform miracles. And you are able. We thank you that we worship a living God that is able. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What the Bible is saying is God is able to give to you so much that you not only have enough for yourself, but He's able to give to you so you have to give away to others. Yes. You know, Linda and myself can give you testimonies of what happened during this time of this pandemic. We were supposed to go to uh, Barcelona, Spain. What happened is we went to Naples, Florida. And I got up to preach in the Spanish church and the Lord said to me, there's a lady that's 60 years of age that's born blind. I want to heal her. And so I just made a statement. All of a sudden this lady started screaming. I said, what happened? They said this lady was born blind but she can see. So she came to the front, she felt her nose, her ears, she wanted to see a tree and a car, they took her outside. But her niece brought her to this meeting, and her father's a pastor in, in Barcelona, Spain. So they invited Linda and myself, because we were going to London in South Africa, to come to Spain, Barcelona, and do a revival for them. And so we had our tickets, we had, I said we're going to look a, a bit at Spain, so we rented a car to ride from Madrid to Barcelona, you know, to do a little bit of sightseeing, and then go and minister, and then go from there to London, and then from there to South Africa. We would be gone for about two and a half months. But you know what happened? We were all packed when they cancelled our flights. That pastor died of the virus, and we would have been there during that time. So the devil tried to take me out before. Now he's trying again. But my God is able. You see, when you operate in the gift of healings, don't think the devil's not going to attack you. Linda burst a blood vessel at the stem of her of brain. And God was healing people in the audience. And the doctor said there's nothing they can do for her. I said, Doc, he said, your, your wife will not live through the night. Mm. But Michael Collison was with me at that time. We were both doing this revival in a movie theater in Norfolk. Yeah. And he looked at that scan. He said to that doctor, we don't believe your report. <laughs> the doctor said, why? He said, because Dr. Jesus touched the last night. <laughs> now he said, the great physician touched the last night. And so he, he said, who's the great physician? This was a Jewish doctor. He said, Jesus, because we are children of the Most High God. Linda walked out of that hospital three days later, completely healed. Five days later, she's always very pacific. I, but then she got cancer. The doctor said it was the worst cancer she had. And God healed of that too. Our God is able to heal. He's able to subdue all things. I want to stop right there in that scripture. God is able. That's the title of our message today is, God is able to heal. He's able to deliver. He's able to save. He's able to supply all your needs according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can imagine, you even expect. 
He's able to perform miracles. So I told you we haven't ministered for so many months and we live off love offerings. Wherever we travel all over the world, God has got us to live by faith. But in this time, we started getting checks in the mail. People came to our house, started giving us money. But whenever somebody gives me money, I always like to pray over them. And so this pastor, about a week ago, or last week, he, he sent me a hundred dollars. And when I prayed over it, the Holy Spirit said to me, I mustn't take this money. I've got to send it back to him, because he has more need of it than me. Wow. I didn't know that for a year, his church had not paid him, because of the pandemic. And so when I prayed and the Lord said that to me, I came to tell Linda, and she said, the Lord is saying we must send him a hundred dollars from our own personal account. I didn't want to listen to her. I said, I'm giving that hundred back already. So I went upstairs to pray. Next morning I came down, I said, look, you're right. The Lord said he must give this pastor a hundred dollars. So we wrote up the check, gave him his hundred back, and then I called him. I said, the Lord said to me, you have a problem. The same problem that I had when I was working for Mercedes-Benz. I earned a lot of money. And so what happened when I went full-time, people used to come to me and say, the Lord said I must give you $10. I wouldn't take it, because I was proud. And so eventually, my mortgage went into arrears. And I started complaining to God. And then God said to me, I've been sending people with the money, but you're not taking the money. I had no problem giving, but I did not know how to receive. And I said to the pastor, the Lord is telling me, you don't know how to receive. You know? And so I ministered to him. I said, you know, the Shunammite woman, when she blessed the man of God, he couldn't give her natural things, but we can release supernatural things. He prophesied over here, when he found out she couldn't have children, that she was going to have a child. Mary and Martha, whenever Jesus came around, they fed him. You know what Jesus did? He raised Lazarus from the dead. The brother. So when you bless a man of God, you can expect supernatural blessings. A lot of people pay their tithes and offerings, but they don't receive supernatural blessings from God because they don't know how to bless the man of God. So I blessed this man. The very next day, a, 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 a doctor called me. He's not saved. And he said to me, Pastor Newby, the Lord said I must give you a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> An antique Mercedes Benz. Praise God. Wow. It's now in my driveway. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want to concentrate on God as able. I want you to take the limit of this great God and be served. Praise God. I never knew that God was going to look after us during this pandemic. But you know what he said to me? If your earthly boss could pay you on time, don't you think that I'll be able to pay you? Praise God. God is able, and I'm going to stop right there, because our God is able to save us, He's able to deliver us, He's able to make us stand, He's able to fulfill all His promises. Our God is able, and He's able to subdue all things. Praise God. In Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar made a statue 90 feet wide, high by 9 feet wide. And he commanded everybody, he sent messengers, to tell them that they must all come and worship this golden image. No matter what nationality, no matter what religion, he said, when the band strikes up, I want everybody to bow at this golden image. And so what happened is, everybody was there. And when the band struck up, they all bowed before this golden image. But three Hebrews boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
They refused to bow at the golden image. And so Nebuchadnezzar in a rage, he called them. And he said, if you're not going to bow this, to this golden image, I'm going to make this fire seven times hotter. And then I'm going to throw you into this fiery furnace. You know what they said? They said, our God is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. Yeah. Now let me tell you something. God will deliver us from. They never knew that they were going to go in. You see, gold is only purified when it goes through the fire. Yeah. I've been through so many fiery furnace experiences, but when you come out of there, you yeah. like pure gold. Yeah. Don't think you're not going to get into trouble. Yeah. But when the devil starts messing, that's when my God starts blessing. Yeah. God will deliver us from. They never knew they were going to go in. And so he got his strongest men to bind him with ropes and throw them in. The fire was so hot that those men perished. And as King Nebuchadnezzar was looking into that fire, he spoke to his advisors and he said, I thought, so, thought we threw in three people, but I see four. Yeah. And the fourth one looks like the Son of God. Yeah. No matter how he counted, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, yeah. one, two, four. He said, I see four. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. When you in that fiery furnace, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yeah. God will turn that fiery furnace into a dance hall. Yeah. Sometimes when you get into that fire, yeah. just start dancing, praising and worshiping God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He'll be with you in the fire. Yeah. He'll be with you in the valley. Yeah. No matter where you go. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. But I'll be with you even unto the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With Jesus in the boat, you can smile at the storm. Yes. Don't let the devil rob you of your blessing. That's why I said, when I die, I'd like to die smiling. So that I'll make a handsome corpse. <laughs> they can drop, drop a bomb next to me. I'm still going to smile. Praise God. Because I know my God. My God is an awesome God. And He's able. He's Nebuchadnezzar said to all his people, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent an angel to do, deliver them. No other God could do what their God has done. Our God is able to deliver. He's able to heal. He's able to subdue all things. He's able to meet all your needs according to His riches in glory. Our God is able. And He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. More than you can imagine, even expect. So take the limit of this great yeah, God on his own. He's an awesome God. Yes, he is. He's King of Kings and He's Lord of Lords. Yeah. You know what the Lord said to me? A lot of people don't know Jesus. Because if you really knew Him, you'd be walking in miracle land. Wow. Hallelujah. You know the lady with the issue of blood? She knew Jesus. There was a crowd around Jesus. Not one of them got healed. You know what moves the hand of God? His faith. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. There was a crowd around Jesus. And this lady said, if I could just push through and grab the hold of his, the hem of his garment. There was a lot of people touching Jesus. But as soon as a woman touched him, he said, who touched me? The disciples said, Lord, there's a multitude of people. Everybody's touching you. But it's a certain type of touch that gets Jesus to stop. It's a touch of faith. Why don't you reach out and touch him this morning? No man can perform miracles for you, but God can. Reach out and touch him this morning and your miracle will be on the way. He said, somebody touched me because virtue went out of me. Praise God. Start believing who God is. He's your source of supply, not yeah. your boss. Right. When I was working and the Lord started teaching me how to trust Him by faith, mm -hmm. I used to get bonuses when nobody else got it. Wow. I used to go to them and say, did you get a bonus this week? They said, yes. 
And you know what I did with that bonus? I threw it into the offering. What happened is a man came to minister in our church and he, had a, he was a pastor from another church. He was only ministering the table of the Lord. And he said he needs money for the roof of his church. Now I had a, a bonus of a thousand dollars in my pocket and he said I'm going to send this plate around now. And I was an introvert. I sat right in the last pew on the end. I never prayed like I did on that day. He said, there's somebody here with a thousand dollars and he must put it in this offering bucket. I started praying that somebody before me would put that thousand dollar bucket. I took that thousand in my, out of my pocket about a thousand times. But by the time the guy got there, I threw it in. I said, God, I need this money more than you. You know what happened? The next week I got another thousand. I went back to these guys. I said, did you get a bonus last week? They said, yes. I said, this week? They said, no. So I went to the manager. He said, I'll contact head office. He came to back to me at lunchtime. He said, head office say the money is due to you. Wow. The following week I got another thousand. I went back to the manager. He said, don't come to me with that bonus off. Stay out of my office. It went on for five weeks. When you bless God, He's got a way of blessing you. Bless God, shake it together, and run it over. Will men give in to your bosom? You know, we, I was preaching in Pastor Duke's church, and I spoke about supernatural miracles. And this lady had no money. She was sitting in the church, and she wanted to throw into the offering. So what happened is, she left the church, went down to one of those stores there, and came, went and drew a, a, a $20. That's what she thought she was drawing. When she put the card in, that thing spat out $20 bills to the tune of 200 So she put the $20 bill in the offering, and she went to see the bank manager the next day. To tell him, you know, when you're a believer, you're not going to take money that's not yours. This bank manager said, that's impossible. This machine never makes mistakes. So they check this, the machine. They can find nothing wrong. They said, you just keep the money. Oh, wow. Jesus. God can fool computers. Yes, he can. Machines is no problem for God. Yes. If he tells him to spit out money, they'll spit out money. You must believe that this God is a miracle working God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is able. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. In Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, Daniel prayed three times a day. How many of us are praying three times a day? You know what the Lord said to me? Some of us, we only start praying when we get into the dead. You're supposed to be prayed up before you even get into the den. Yes. He prayed three times a day and that got him into the lion's den. Daniel was a man of God. Yes. Hallelujah. And then some people saw him pray. And then they went to King Darius and said that if anybody asks anything from any other God or any other king, then King Darius, they must be thrown into the lion's den. They begged him to sign that into law. They were after Daniel. Mm -hmm. Daniel knew that the king signed that into law, but still he went and prayed. That's right. And they found him praying. So they went to report to King Darius. He was furious with himself because he loved Daniel. And he had no alternative but to send them to arrest Daniel. And then when Daniel came before the king. You know what the king said to him? Before him threw him into the lion's den. May the God that you worship continually. I wish people would say that about us. Jesus. The God that you worship continually. Yes. You know, worship is a priority. Yes. That day and night, there's worship in heaven. The Bible says when we stand before the Lord in Revelation 6, there will be a half an hour of silence. But at the moment, the angels worship him by sight. We worship him by faith. But on that day, we'll be standing there face to face in our white robes. 
What a glorious day that will be. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now let me, know, let me tell you why worship is a priority. Because when Satan fell, one third of the angels that worship God fell with him. Amen. And there's a void in heaven. And the church, you and I, we fill that void. That's right. Amen. Because when we worship God here today, Hallelujah. tomorrow, I mean, at the same time, when we go to bed, people in Japan get up and worship God. 24-7, yes. there is worship from the church. Wow. Wow. Worship is a priority. When all else fails, try praise and worship. Hmm. It will get you out of your carnality, out of the soul realm and into the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should worship God before you pray. Yes. So that you know what you ought to pray for. The Bible says we don't know what we ought to pray for. But the disciples said to Jesus, teach us to pray. Now you need to get into the presence of God and ask Him what you need to pray for. Praise God. Hallelujah. Otherwise we pray selfish and vain prayers. We've got to get into the presence of God. Jesus, when they nailed him to the cross, he was praying for the people that nailed him there. Yes. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes. I found out, when you pray for others, I prayed for that pastor and God blessed me. That's right. Don't have selfish and vain prayers. That's right. Pray for others. Amen. Job only had an answer to pray when he prayed for others. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so the king arrested Daniel, threw him into the den, and placed a big stone in front of the den and sealed it. That meant that only the king could open up that tomb. I mean that den. Praise God. The king returned to the palace. He refused all entertainment. He could not sleep the entire night. Early the next morning, he arose and ran down to the lion's den. He said, Oh Daniel, servant of the living God, was the God who you worship continually able to keep you from the mouth of the lions? Yes. Daniel shouted, Oh King, live forever. I have not done anything to you or anybody else, but my God was able to shut the mouth of of the lions. Yes, yes, yes. Our God is able. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He said, I am innocent before God and I have not done you any harm. The king was excited and ordered Daniel to be brought out of the den. The people that accused Daniel together with their wives and children were thrown into the den and they got killed and eaten up by the lions. But look what King Darius said. Praise God. Everybody shall tremble and fear the God of Daniel in every part of my kingdom. For his God is a loving, unchanging God yes. whose kingdom shall never fail yes. and never be destroyed and whose power shall never come to an end. He delivers his people, preserving them from harm and does great things and miracles in heaven and on earth. It is he who delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Yes. Our God is able to deliver, yes. is able to heal, yes. is able to subdue all things, yes. is able to meet all your needs according yes. to his riches in glory. Yes. Our God is able. You. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But you know, those three words excite me, but the next two words excite me even more. He's able to make. Yes. No other God can make. This God has made you and He's made me. Yes. All these gods that they worship, Hare Krishna cannot make, right. Muhammad cannot make, right. Buddha cannot make, yeah. right. but this God that we serve, He can make. Yes. Yes. He made you and He made me. Yes. He can make a way yes. where there seems to be no way. Yes. Moses had the Red Sea in front of him, yes. Pharaoh behind him, and God made a way yes. where there seemed to be no way. Our God is a way maker. Yes, Amen. Amen. And He deals with impossible situations. Yes. All you've got to do is just stand mm. and see what this God has done. You see, Pharaoh is a type of Satan. 
Too many of us miss our miracles because we don't trust God. Mm. We don't know who He is. No. When you have that Red Sea experience, all you've got to do is stand. That's right. And He will make a way yes, where there seems to be no way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He says in His Word, in Isaiah, praise God, 45 verse 2, when thou passest through the waters, yeah. I will be with thee. Yeah. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow yeah. thee. When thou walkest through the fires, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall a flame kindle upon yeah. thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Yes. Our God is able yes, he is. to make all grace abound towards you. Yes. So that you have all sufficiency in all things. Yeah. Praise God. You know what I found out? My wife and myself were given away nine cards. Well, I found out 12 cards. I lost count. <laughs> I found out that nothing belongs to me. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Everything belongs to God. Amen. You know, when I was a young evangelist traveling in South Africa, yeah. I found out how difficult it was when you never had accommodation. So I had keys made on my house because I was traveling all the time. And when I went to Africa, I stayed away for months. And I would give these keys to evangelists. And one day I went through Africa for about three months. And I came back at one o'clock in the morning. I decided to drive home after that flight. And I saw all my lights were on in the house. I said, oh my God, I left the lights on for three months. <laughs> you know, when I opened up the door, the whole living room was full of evangelists. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you know, I was so tired that night, but they kept us talking till the next morning, 8 o'clock, telling everyone about miracles that happened. But everything that I have belonged to other people. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It's not mine. I'm just a custodian. Yes. Amen. Yes. So if you have that attitude, that nothing belongs to you, everything belongs to God, it's easy to give something that doesn't belong to you. So when God tells us to give, we give. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And you don't, if you don't give right, you cannot receive from God. Right. That's why the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. Yeah. When you open up your hands to God, you will pour out a blessing from heaven. There will not be enough room to, to contain it. Amen. So you know what the Bible says about tithes and offering? He said He will open the windows of heaven. I said, God, I'm not in interested in windows. <laughs> windows are too small. Mm -hmm. The New Testament says you open up doors. You can get more through a door than through a window. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. You want God to open doors? Yeah. Start giving to the gospel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know why I'm saying that, but I want you to be blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. In South Africa, we have an interpreter. Here you have yeah, I have an interrupter. Yeah. <laughs> what was it you were saying? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God for a woman of God. Yes. That yes. told me I had to give this man that money. Hallelujah. I would have missed my blessing because I said I gave a hundred dollars. It was his own money I gave him. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. And God is able. I want you just to turn to your neighbor and say, God is able, God is able. to meet your need. So don't worry. Cast all your cares upon Him, for He cares. You may have need of a miracle this morning. I know a God of miracles. No matter what situation you're going through, if it's a physical, financial, no matter what it is, and you need God to touch you, He's here this morning. Yeah. He's passing by this highway, yeah. just like He did with the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. All you've got to do is reach out and touch Him. Yeah. This is not the work of a man. Yeah. This is the work of the Most High God. Yeah. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be your God. Draw me closely to His side. 